before we can really start talking about the different types of research methodologies that are out there, it's really important to learn and understand two philosophical terms. These are ontology and epistemology. For those of you who are coming to this conversation, having taken a lot of philosophy, you may be very reassured right now. Others of you may be looking at this in bafflement and it's not as hard as these very complicated Greek words might seem. So ontology comes from the Greek concept of concept to be, right? The Greek way of talking about being. And remember that logi comes from logos, meaning the study of, right? So ontology is the study of or thinking about what is. And this is really about understanding the nature of reality. This sounds very big deal for you. And you might think, what does this have to do? Well, it actually turns out what you think is the actual nature of things ends up shaping what sorts of decisions or assumptions you make. So for instance, if you think the whole world is a computer simulation and that we are all just like, you know, little Sims characters running around, then from your point of view, the way you try to understand what's going on is going to be about trying to understand what the simulation is doing, right? Or your way of perceiving reality is going to be different than someone who believes that um, a set of accidental circumstances led to the creation of life, that we kind of understand an objective reality that exists outside of us, all those things, right? I leaned a little bit into epistemology there when I said we understand, right? Um, so epistemology is the study of knowledge, right? And it has kind of different parts, one of which is what counts as knowledge. So for instance, we've had a big problem within um, settler colonial logics of understanding indigenous oral tradition as knowledge, right? It's not knowledge. The story of Sky Woman isn't knowledge to people within the Western tradition, but it is to people within the traditions, uh, the Sinanishinaabe uh, story, the story of Sky Woman. Um, and it is real, right? And one of the things that's become problematic is that in fact, lots of information that is useful to us might be contained within these things we don't count as knowledge. So how do we start counting them as knowledge, right? So this is, this is one question of epistemology is what counts. And the other question is, how do we know what we know, right? So for instance, am I a camera recording what goes on around me? Am I, is this a circumstance like quantum physics, right? Where if you perceive something, you change it. Is this a circumstance where something isn't always what it seems, right? Your assumptions about what's going on epistemologically and your, your kind of answers to these questions really matter when you're trying to figure out how to conduct research. When you're talking about ontology, the two biggest camps in social science research come from those who believe that um, there is an objective world that is completely external to people and that just exists apart from us. And the others who believe that the world exists only because we are in it, right? And that our, the world, rather than existing and taking all of its form separate from us and we just kind of bounce around in it like pinballs, we are an active part of creating the reality as it is. And for epistemology, the question is more divided between people who say, look, I am going to, I can obtain objective data about the world, right? I can go out and get it and it will exist in and of itself versus those and anybody who's collecting this data would get the same data. And those who say, look, my ability to perceive and the things I can know will always be shaped by what I already know, right? And so there's no way for me to get objective contextless information about the world. So these different positions make a big difference in terms of how you are thinking about and how you go about conducting research.